Hey everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play JBLP1. We are currently on level 26, Frozen Apple. So let's go ahead and just get started here. Make sure my sound is on. Uh, so this level, I want to say, was one of the later additions to the set. And you can see here, there's some appearing walls, toggle walls, thin walls, and ice corners that kind of turn this into a bit of a rink-like maze. I don't know what exactly possessed me to make this. I think my intention was to make something that was a sort of condensed version of Rink. That was one of the things I I was trying to do with quite a few of my levels was, I think when it came to CCLP1 and even after CCLP1, which was designed to be a kind of easier version, or not easier version, but a, a comparable uh, set to CC1, I wanted to make levels that sort of went back to ideas that were explored in CC1 and either scaled them appropriately or revisit them, revisited them in a more player-friendly way. And this is one of those examples, because I want to... I feel like Rink is one of those levels that a lot of people had nightmares about growing up. I, I know I did, and I was that guy who just kind of brute-forced levels as a kid, because I, I didn't really have any, you know, logic or at the very least, not much of it in my, my head. And where do you get that chip from? I am so lost here. So this was my attempt at remaking Rink, but with different stuff in it. Okay, so there's a... Where do you go? Okay, so that... I can't approach it from the bottom. That's a dead end. So it looks like I need to go through the teleport such that I go right out of it. So how do I... I keep bumping into walls. Okay, I see the teleport there. I just need to figure out how to get there. Um, wow, I wasn't expecting to be tripped up by this one. I guess that's a sign of a good maze, right? Or one of them, at least. There's probably other criteria that you can use. That's an interesting topic that's, uh, that's come up lately. Um, I don't know when this video will go live and if Josh is going to bring this up in his um, Josh CCLP5 playthrough. But one of the things that we've been discussing that's come out of my Trading Places Let's Play and some other conversations has been what exactly is considered reasonable. There we go. Finally. What exactly is considered reasonable from the perspective of um, repetition, or at least using repetition in a level? So what brought this on originally was, and this level is kind of a take on sampler, modern art gallery. Enjoy our fine minimalist paintings. Yeah, this level inspired at least a name, um, minimalist art gallery from C uh, Walls of CCLP1. So basically, you have to go through here and just start the item swap. And there's lots of invisible stuff here, too, um, just to make it look a little more minimalist. So um, so what originally brought this on was a, a comment I had made in the, the walls of C or the uh, Trading Places Let's Play about the level Gwarhar Oasis, where... Um, Basically, there was this challenge that involved three blocks, and I made a comment in the Let's Play saying I thought that was a little bit too much, and that you could have basically done that without having to use three blocks. And um, and Josh left a, a, a good comment on the video about that, and um, there it is. And we had a conversation about it afterwards where we were talking about a level that he was making for our Walls of CC1 project, and, uh... Did I make these paths, like, intentionally long? Okay, that one's not. And this this one level had a, a similar thing, where you had to clone blocks, in this case, like, four of them or so, and you had to, um... Um, at the end, like, direct a monster around and stuff. And, uh, I basically mentioned with this one that, um... Okay, it's the fire one. There we go. Did I keep the... Okay, the yellow door guards a chip. I didn't know if I made the yellow door guard the exit, like, in sampler. 
Um, but basically, both VT and I had mentioned that we thought that one of the blocks was unnecessary. And, um, you know, Josh wasn't really sure how to react to that, you know, because, you know, he had a reason for wanting the um, the level the way it was. And the reason ended up being that, you know, he wanted to be kind of a time crunch level. And so he was partially inspired by Jeffrey's level uh, Cosmic Express from Trading Places. This level, by the way, this was kind of my attempt at a steal, steal things from monsters thing without it being quite as specific as ch, -ch chips from the original game, where you had to like get a chip from the paramecium there. I don't know. It, it, it's not really the greatest idea in the world, but it was it was an attempt at something. Gray Matter. Man, I was really proud of that title. Can you figure out a way to tell which choice is correct? So what you're supposed to figure out here is that if a wall is in line with a recessed wall, then that's the correct path. This level was inspired by a Daniel Bowmeister level called Pop Wall. And uh, it's pretty straightforward at the end of the day. That, like, There's really not a whole lot to it. You just have to snake around here and there's the exit. Yeah, I... I think my rationale for this one was I liked the concept of Pop Wall because it had this really kind of messy aesthetic. And so I thought, why not make a level where you didn't have to guess? Like, you could figure out something as a clue, and then that would help you out. Um, oh, Reservoir Frogs. Well, this one should look familiar. This was in CCL before, and this was definitely one of the new ones that I had added after the 100-level version. In fact, I want to say all of these are... Well, I could be misremembering. Yeah, you if you've seen my CCLP4 Let's Play or have played through the set, then you've you probably recognize this one. Anyway, while I play through this, I'll I'll talk a little bit more about the conversation. Um so Josh brought up Cosmic Express, which has a section in it where you clone four blocks, um, but that's all you do. And I think my response to that would be that in the context of Cosmic Express, that kind of section works uh, because you're constantly moving throughout that level and having to dodge stuff and direct stuff. And for once, you get this challenge where you don't have to do that. You can just kind of catch your breath while still moving around, but you're doing something that's a little tedious that shuts your brain down a little bit. So in that case, I think it works really well in the context of the overall level. Uh, but then Josh brought up something that I thought was interesting, and it ties into some comments that we've all kind of been mentioning in our our group chat, and also Josh has said this in his uh, CCLP5 submissions videos too, so this has been kind of put out there already. I'm not really saying anything that hasn't been said already. Um, but he's he mentioned something in, in a couple of his videos I thought was really interesting. Um, and I say interesting because I, I feel this way too. So, I, Josh, you are not alone in this. Please believe me when I say that. Um, basically, he said, you know, I miss the days when I can make a level and not have to think so hard about it being critiqued. Um, and I think during the Josh CCLP5 playthrough, he was on, what was the name of it? Fluoride from Josh L6. Um, and we had recently played through that here on this channel. We, we played through Josh L6, and that was a... a an invisible maze level with like a watery diamond kind of diagonal line aesthetic which i liked you know i thought it was a cool maze and it was fun to navigate and stuff i thought it was really neat um and he was like you know back when i made this i basically put together um, a level based on hey i want to put these two tiles together and that's kind of how the level was born and um and he was like i wish i could do that now and my natural kind of instinct was to say you know, to my screen when I was watching this, I was like, why can't you? You know, you can make anything you want. And of course, you know, I'm not really any different. You know, I, I have reservations about some of the levels I make too. Because um, I, I do have those fears. I do have those apprehensions that, you know, I have some expectations to live up to. And, you know, if I don't make something cool and revolutionary, then it's going to be... Um, it's not going to be very well received or, you know, things like that. And, you know, just to any designer out there, 
yeah, I, I'm not going to say, you know, get over it, you know, or anything like that, because that's not fair to you. But what I will say is that I don't think anybody expects that you're going to hit gold every time. And that's not a reflection on you. That's just a reflection on the way the creative process works and how different and vast the things we do here in Chips Challenge are. You know, you have so much to work with in this game that not everything is going to stick, right? And that's fine, you know? Even the best level designers, you know, the ones that I would say have had the most experience, they don't hit gold every time. You know, Josh and Jeffrey and, you know, and that's not an insult, by the way. Um, by the way, before we exit this level, so this is called Lone Star State, and some of you have probably been able to tell already, but this is made in the shape of Texas, which is where I used to live at the time this was made. And I tried to make each area correspond to, like, the type of climate that's there so like this upper section is the panhandle which is a little bit colder and drier and then down here we have like the dry area the deserty arid area with, of el paso and then here we have um like the fun city of austin and san antonio i guess is where i was going for with that and then here we have the border i guess i guess the the traps are like Border Patrol? I don't know what I was thinking with that. And then here along this line we have the coastline with the Gulf of Mexico and all that. And then I don't know what I was going for with the fire here. Uh, the green is meant to represent like the what people call the piney woods of East Texas, uh, which is where I lived. Where there were a lot of trees and a little bit more green to see. So that was the inspiration behind this. It's not really that great of a level, but I mainly made it for the aesthetic and the shape of it. So, that is Lone Star State. Uh, concentricity. This was my attempt at making a nice day kind of level. There's so many levels I made in this set that were kind of corollaries to CC1 stuff. It kind of got a little bit derivative at some points, and I would say this is one of them. Except this has I have a lot more chips than nice day. So anyway, you know, I, I, to any designer who's, who feels like they're struggling right now, and I include myself in, that, in this at times because we all have our bad days and we all feel um, like we have insecurities to battle when we go through the creative process. Um, keep going. Keep creating. You know, um, I don't say that to sound trite. I don't say that to minimize the insecurities. I say that because I think at the end of the day, without sitting down and just putting... I didn't realize just how the walkers were st stuck to the fireballs like that. That's interesting. At least until this point where they're free. I kind of wish I had thought of that when I designed those. But anyway, that's my attempt at like an open dodging level. I had this obsession with making a lot of open levels around this time, so this was one of those, one of those things. Open door policy. You know, this was also, also a new one as well. Um, so the whole premise behind this, all blocks have chips under them, except this one. Um, so yeah, the, the whole premise behind this was to kind of figure out this sequencing puzzle here. And I think this is the correct way to go, because you can get a yellow there, and then you can start unraveling. Whoops, I did not mean to minimize my window. I think I clicked my trackpad there by accident. Um, okay, good. Not good. I can't escape. Okay. That was a cook. I guess I don't technically need to go here, but I'll do it for funsies. Uh, let me make sure... Oh, I see. I can open up the path to the blue door. That's what's going on. Okay. Yeah, I should have realized that. So yeah, this was my attempt at making kind of a key swapping level with a little bit of, um, what's the name of that one, um, 49 Cell from Andrew Menzies. I don't know if, I can't remember if I was, if that level existed at this point. It probably did. All right, Lorem Chipsum. Uh, so this was my attempt at a cipher level. And... This title came from the level title bank. And so what I wanted to do with this was to create something where the cipher would be in chips. Kind of like just a bunch of letters, which I shamelessly ripped off here. But each 
set of passwords would be kind of in a different font if you want to call these fonts um, I'm not gonna bother going to these levels in the in the game here but anyway the uh, the top one was kind of a sort of roundish font and then this one is bold and very angular so you got this one so yeah I'm um, getting back to what I was saying earlier you know you know I've struggled with a lot of the same kind of insecurities that's okay I didn't realize how close this was if I designed this now I probably wouldn't have done that if I was trying to aim for like a beginner level level here there's so many tanks here. I didn't realize just how many tanks there were here compared to just a bunch of letters. And this area was definitely meant to be kind of like a dotted sort of look where I figured that was going to happen at some point. Um, so yeah, I, I've definitely struggled with a lot of the same anxieties too. Um, and I think that's partially just because I haven't been as consistent with designing levels so I admittedly come from a different place than um, someone more prolific like Josh might come from um, in that you know I feel like oh you know I'm rusty because I haven't designed for a long time and you know it it's kind of like riding a bike right like you you get nervous when you get on the bike um, and you're kind of like oh you know I don't know if I can do this and stuff and then you know, eventually you get used to it again. But I think part of that is making a bunch of stuff and not all of it is necessarily going to be five star in CCLP voting, but I don't think anyone's really expecting it, anything to be five star. And you know what? I'm going to cheat there. Ah, no, 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 no. My window went inactive. I do not like it when that happens. That is so annoying. Josh has been having that happen a lot lately too. And I don't know what causes it. Like I I've looked up the problem online and apparently it's some Windows issue that just has never been corrected, which is really annoying. But yeah, um I feel like whenever I get back into making levels, it's like it takes me a while to really find my groove again and that's always a little unnerving because there's there's a little voice the the imposter syndrome voice you could call it that rings out inside my head and goes you know are you sure you still know how to do this and that can be rather demoralizing but you know eventually you know after some trial and error you know I find the groove again and you know some thing comes out of that you know and that's I think that's just the nature of the creative process in general you know it's not unique to any one person or anything and everybody kind of struggles with that when they're trying to make something and um, whenever they especially whenever they feel like they have expectations to live up to but I would also say that you know like I mentioned earlier expectations aren't always what we think they are you know I uh, I do think that there is excitement you know like I remember when we announced that um, that we were going to do this walls of CC one thing which by the way has happened now Josh mentioned in one of his videos when that happens you know a lot of people responded really positively and you know I remember we were really happy with that um, and I think that that kind of excitement is very different from expectations like people can be excited but be just like hey you know I'm just gonna play the set when it comes out and just enjoy whatever it is you know I, I think that's most people you know it's I feel like I've kind of contributed to some of the problem though by like in my previous let's plays of like walls of CCLB 3 and whatnot I've, I've rated levels and mentioned things as if you know I'm rating them in a CCLP voting and that's not really fair and I and we've talked about that before but I don't think most people really think along those terms when it just comes to you know opening up a new set and just playing through it you know I think most people just play the game and just have fun with it 
Um, you know, you have your people here and there who are critics, but, you know, I, I don't think they're the, the majority. Anyway, this is Loop Isle. This level was deliberately meant to be a reference to the cell levels from Andrew Menzies' sets. Um, I definitely remember being inspired by, um, at the very least, 25 cell, because this level is not very big. But my main goal with this one was I wanted to make something where at the very end you had to push a block through the whole thing and dodge all the monsters. And I think it worked out pretty well. It's not terribly hard. Um, and I like the island aesthetic too. I mean, it's pretty basic, but I think it works. So, oh yes, this level, Worlds Collide. So this was one of the many levels in the set that was inspired by uh, the game Jetpack, which uh, I've LP'd on the channel before. And in that game, there was a level by this name um, that had the, these, like, I want to say it may have been two or three different aesthetics just crash into each other and sort of collide in the center of everything. And uh, I wanted to do something similar for CC, but I wanted to use two combinations of two tiles apiece. And so that's where water and gravel and dirt and fire came into play. And I want to say that the water, gravel, dirt, fire choice was inspired by Modhav, of all people. Because I think there was a point where he mentioned that he liked both of, both of those aesthetics a lot. And so I thought, you know, why not give this a shot? I feel like that was kind of when I was more in my people-pleasing phase, and I just kind of wanted to go wherever people were trending as far as level design and all that was concerned. Nowadays, it's just kind of like, you know, I'll make something if I feel like I could make a good level out of it. If not, you know, then we'll just move on, I guess. And I think the exit's in the bottom right corner. All right, here we go. And done. I really like that one a lot. That, that one's fun. All right, Monster Mash. I'm surprised I put this one as late as it is. This is basically my monster, not tutorial, but like review level, kind of like Button Brigade. Test your dodging skill in this stage where every monster has claimed residence. All right, so this is kind of a larger version, if you will, of We've Got Hostiles except now it includes everything, and thankfully the, the tank rhythm is a little more reasonable. Yeah, this one is, it's a level. It's, whoa, that was very close. Um, I think with that section I just went through, I was still in that mindset of wanting to make like a sandbox to play in. And like we talked about in the last video, I, I don't think sandboxes necessarily are good teaching tools, like they're good review tools, or yeah, you know, like maybe in this context it's not so bad, but like in the context of um, we've got hostiles, I think this may have not have been the best approach. But it's a, I guess you know for this set's purpose, it's not that bad. It's just I wish I hadn't done something so generic for for this one. I think that's one thing I'm, I'm working on right now is, like for, for the walls of CC1 set, I tried challenging myself recently to make like a first decade sort of review kind of level. And um, the level I ended up making, I, like I set out deliberately to kind of like over, like subvert some of the expectations that normally come around um, the first decade review level cliches, if you want to call them that. You know, like, if you looked at a level like um, Proving Grounds, for instance, I'll use one of my own. Like, that level has a lot of stuff in it that you would expect to see in a tutorial, but they're just all smushed together. And you could say the same about stuff like Entrance Examination or, you know, other ones that were designed with the sole purpose of this is going to be a review level later on, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and there's nothing inherently wrong with that, but I feel like now, you know, it's worth trying something a little different. It doesn't have to be revolutionary or anything. It just needs to maybe start with a different premise. And so I made this level 
Uh, I won't say what the name is, and maybe you'll, you'll figure it out once the set gets released, because we're going to release it without, like, spelling out, you know, in a on the Discord who made what. Like, I think we're going to have a CCX file for that. And if Gliderbot on the Discord can get updated to include designer as a field from the CC edit editor, then we can certainly... Whoops, I did not mean to do that. We can certainly use that. But anyway, um, I kind of started with the premise of what would be appropriate, um, like, first decade challenges that you could put in that combine the elements in different ways. And then from there, the level got born. And I think it turned out pretty well. I mean, it's not, you know, the greatest level ever, but I think it does its job really well, and that's, at the end of the day, all you can really ask for, right? It does what it says on the tin. Um, so anyway, this level is called Breen District, and this is one of the few levels in the set that was a collaboration, um, in this case with Eddie Wim, or Look at This on uh, the CC community. And we actually made two levels together, this one and one that comes later on. Um, this one... I don't remember what exactly, I, I think I had mentioned the idea for this and then he made um, the level out of it, or maybe I just had the layout of it. I, I forget exactly how it all came together, but I feel like he did most of the actual plotting of things in the editor work. Um, I also really like the fact that the bold time is a very tight bold time in MS, like it's a um, a point one if you were to route the the level in Super CC. Like I don't know, there's just something really satisfying about when you discover a route and it's just enough time. I know it can be frustrating in some levels, but when it turns out to be a happy accident, it's pretty fun. Okay, speaking of um, review levels, start at the end. So. This level was uh, also in CCLP1 as well, which means that it was in the 100 level version of the set. And I think this was my attempt at trying to make a nuts and bolts level. Like this room was deliberately inspired by both the opening room and the blue wall section above it in nuts and bolts. This, I don't really know what I was going for with this fireball thing. I think I was just, it was just a simple dodging challenge. And then this room, I think originally I was going to have something more complicated here, but then that just ended up being kind of too much trouble. So I just made this little block challenge. I, was, I think I was thinking of Arctic Flow when making it, and my trackpad is being very fiddly right now. So this is interesting. Um, I don't remember if I showed this in my um, um, CCLP1 Let's Play. But basically what I did with this room um, is I put a hint here that says sometimes levels contain unneeded extra boots. And the whole premise of this inclusion here was to make it so that um, you basically could sidestep some of the level and quote unquote bust it, even though, whoops, I went inactive again there. Um, you could basically bust the level and, um, wait, was that supposed to, yeah, that's fine. I was like, I'm so used to playing like really difficult levels. I'm like, oh, do I need to use that block somewhere else? And this section is basically an item swapper that uses this teleport. And we actually have to take a break from it to go down here. And then we have this little trinity-like force maze down here. So I think my main intention with making this level kind of comparable to Nuts and Bolts was not just CC1 um, similarity, but also I had made every trick in the book, which I had previously titled Take a Walk, um, for uh, JL1, which eventually made it into CCLP3. And for CCLP3, we had this contest that submitted that involved submitting like a, a level one candidate. And I remember submitting it and it definitely got a lot of this is too hard for level one kind of feedback. And in my mind, I was like, how is this hard 
you know, when it's just reviewing simple things that you know, not really, really up, realizing that it was so long that, you know, the length of it really kind of got in the way of it being a simple level. Um, and so because of that, I decided, you know, let's try this again, but with something a lot easier. So that's where this level came from. Okay, Sundance. Speaking of CCLB1 levels, we have this one. So the original title of this level was called The Warmth of the Sun. And um, I might reuse that. But essentially, there was a trilogy of levels that was created for the game Escape. Um, that had the names, and I keep forgetting that those fireballs are there. There was this trilogy of levels that had the names The Warmth of the Sun, Blue Moon, and Starry Nights. And I wanted to kind of replicate the aesthetics of those in CC while making the level, you know, what was in the levels obviously very different. Um, and so the actual, like, foundational design of this with all the lines and stuff that you see here, like you see the symmetrical pattern of this, that was actually based on the level from Escape that this person made. I think they they went by the name MJN, which is, I'm assuming initials. But yeah, Blue Moon was also, it took like the layout, but I made a, like a blue wall maze out of it. Um, and then the Starry Night level was very different. A blue wall square has landed on top of the thin wall diamond. Can you find your way out? Um, so yeah, this is Juxtaposition, which was also in CCLB1. We're hitting a lot of the official levels here in this chunk. I'm going to guess that that's not going to last, though. Because I, I know some of the things coming up in the 50s, especially. Um, but anyway, um, Starry Night, I basically just made something original out of that, design-wise, but kept like the name. And I think my intention was to put all three of them together, but that didn't really quite happen at the end of the day. So yeah, juxtaposition. So the impetus behind this level was kind of interesting, and I don't remember if I mentioned this in CCLB1, so let's play. But when I originally designed this, this layout of the two, like the square and the diamond put together, was actually used for a level that never got released called Element Mixup. And it was kind of a generic sort of boot trading level where you had like three mazes layered on top of each other. You kind of had a, you know, a fire maze and a water maze and an ice maze. Or rather you had mazes where you had to use each of the corresponding boots to travel those three elements. Where, you know, one at a time where all the elements were present in the level. Overall it was one of those things where I, I kind of scrapped it halfway through because I realized that that concept was done so well with something like Triple Maze that, you know, trying to come back to that probably would just be redundant. And then on top of that, we also had Choices. Choices from Pi Squared. Um, and then Jeffrey more recently made Choice Tools, which took that concept and condensed it down a little bit while offering more options. So I was kind of like, okay, this this idea, we can just toss this. But I thought, you know, maybe the layout could be interesting. So why don't we use it for another maze? And then I, th I had this epiphany one day where I was like, hey, you know, why don't we take um, blue wall levels from CC1? And much like we were talking about with Rink, you know, making that a little more player friendly and scaled more reasonably, I thought, you know, why not ditch the traditional kind of, you know, oof on everything kind of level and make something a little bit more fun to navigate where you're not just having to do trial and error on everything. Um, this kind of gets back to that whole thing about repetition, but, you know, with this kind of layout, you know, the oofing didn't feel quite as prevalent, I guess. Like, it, it's there, but it's not, like, so... Um, it's just not so, it's not hanging over the whole thing. So that's kind of why I decided to make this. And so I, I decided to take a thin wall maze that would make the diamond and then put a blue wall square, quote unquote, on top of it. And then the areas where they didn't overlap, I could just have pure blue walls or pure thin walls. And where is this last chip? I thought I saw it here somewhere. Oh, I know where it is. It's over here, isn't it? it wasn't the one on the left side? Yeah, there it is. 
I knew we saw it earlier, but my brain shuffled to another thing. And By the way, I, I want to bring that up here because I, I've heard a lot of comments recently, especially when it comes to Let's Play, saying, hey, you know, you saw this while playing the level because it was visible in your window, you know, and you may have even made a comment about it. My brain does not retain that. I just want to make that clear. Like, just because I see something doesn't mean that I'm going to remember it in five seconds. I might be jumping to another thing in terms of what I'm talking about, or, you know, I may be juggling enough stuff with the recording that I'm... It may not just be there at the top of my head, you know, when it comes to trying to retrace my steps and stuff. So I just thought I'd put that out there. All right, so this level um, duo here is pretty fun. Autonomous Collective. Clear the dirt to change the monster's paths. Remember which directions fireballs and gliders turn. Uh, so this was yet another attempt at making a sandboxy monster dodging level. And this was referencing the scene from Monty Python and the Holy Grail where King Arthur meets the peasant named Dennis or whatever. Um, what, wasn't he named Dennis? I think he was. But he was that guy who, whoops, um, who was like very indignant toward King Arthur and was like, well, I didn't vote for you. And that was a terrible English accent that sounded like a country accent. But anyway, um, in that scene, um, Dennis's wife um, was like, I thought we were an autonomous collective, you know, referring to the political structure of their village or whatever. And then he was like, no, we're an, anar we're, we're an anarcho -syndicla syndicalist commune. Um, so I made two levels called autonomous collective and anarcho syndicalist commune, which is the next one after this. And yeah, this was a little trickier than I remember. I can see why this wasn't that popular for CCLP stuff. Because on one hand, it's like, okay, if you really boil down this level, it's not that hard. But, like, for CCLP 1, it's just not, like, it, it's not as friendly as you might think with all this tight dodging. All right, here's the, the companion level. So in the, the movie, the character says, we take it in turns to enact an executive officer of the week. Help the monsters take turns as executive officer of the week. Yeah, this level is kind of silly, um, but I really like it, and I realize I just cooked it. Um, so with this one, you have to basically use this block to direct monsters around and, like, release them one at a time. So there's this mechanism of walkers. I think it's walkers that decide the order in which the monsters come out because it's not a fixed order. And... Um, as long as you're cognizant of what kind of monster it is and how they move, then you should be totally fine. It's like the glider can go through water, so all we have to do is just make sure it doesn't hit the bomb, so we just put that there. And then we do that. I suppose you could... Oh no, it would just go into a bomb. I was like, what happens if you loop it around there? But That's not a good idea. And then the bug is last, so we just need to put the block there. And then as a final thing to do... All we need to do next is just push the block into this and get the key. And that's it. That's uh, that's this level. I, I like this one a little more. It's not the most interesting thing in the world from a challenging perspective. It was definitely designed to be uh, a fairly approachable level uh, for CCLB1. But um, I think maybe it could have been opened up a little more, you know, maybe have a few more, like maybe have a second block or something if you want to make it a little bit more interesting. Maybe I'll do that, actually. All right, Chipped Teeth. So this was, I think, one of the new levels added for the 149 level set. And uh, this one was made purely for the title, I'm going to confess. Um, I also was heavily inspired by Joshua Bone's level Condo from his Josh B. Lynx set. And uh, that level had a very similar kind of apartment-like structure where the chips would be laid out in little cells like this. But I wanted to make mine a lot less um, constrained and make like a diamond shape out of it. Not, not constrained, but the scale of it I wanted to make a little bigger. 
And then I thought it would be kind of funny to put all these teeth in the middle that don't do anything at all, but they're there because the title is Chip Teeth, and you're getting chips, and there's teeth. Yeah, very original. Very clever. Uh, I... That's one of those things that I'm like... I'm very torn about. It's like, where do you draw the line with level titles being the starting point for a level? Uh, because I, you know, we've definitely developed some um, accessibility in that regard over the last few years with the level title bank on the Chips Wiki. And with that, you know, you could find a level title and be like, hey, you know, I want to make a level with name X, right? And then that's where you start with making the whole thing. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but like, I feel like you need to have like an idea to match it. You know, things can come organically, but I think in this case it was more like, hey, let me just make something that looks appropriate for this. And as far as how it plays, eh, I feel like it got very repetitive after a while. I, I'm not the biggest fan of it. It's... The, the concept is just not really all that compelling, and I, I do think that it's just... It's scaled very... very ridiculously in some ways. I think Joshua Bone did this a lot better. Alright, home improvements. Um, should I do one more? Yeah, let's do one more. So this level was originally titled At Home. Um, oh no, you've been locked out of the house in which you're staying. But while you're out in the yard, why not clean up? So this level was my attempt at making a ch ch chips uh, analog kind of level. And uh, you can even see there that there was a bug from which you needed to steal a chip. Although unlike ch ch chips, there are blocks in the level that you could bring up there um, to get that bug to um, give you more space so you don't have to really snatch a chip like that. We have a little bug section out here. So all this stuff is kind of meant to be a garden kind of thing. You know, we've got grassy, whatever this topiary thing is. And it's just kind of meant to be there to... Did I hit the button again? I think I might have. It's basically meant to be there for um, aesthetic sake. And I, I really like uh, the way this level feels. It's very nice and open. The challenges aren't like particularly revolutionary like I, I keep saying that but that wasn't the point in this case and I did hit the button again okay but I think in this case it works just because there's really not anything that this is trying to do beyond just being a nice simple open level with some variety in it so from that perspective I like this way more than chipped teeth you know that one it was a concept that was blown up to a very repetitive degree. This one, it's it's got some nice challenges for a set like CCLP1, and I'm kind of sad this didn't make it in. But I, I get why, you know. And looks like we're going to need to open up the toggles again. Okay. Yeah, the original title of this level, At Home, was a reference to a Revolt custom track, the racing game that I LP'd on the channel a while back. I like how you have to go through that little door to go home. It's like entering the house, I guess. Like, I don't know. It, it's not really, like, oriented properly because you're already kind of in the body of the house before you go through the middle, which is supposed to be a door. And, yeah, it's weird. But I think it works aesthetically. I think it's pretty cool. All right. Next time, we're going to start off with Sink Your Teeth. So I'll see you then, everybody. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed yourselves today. And I'll catch you on the next one. So take care and see you then.